But the essence of the belief of I'm a separate river on my way to the ocean has nowhere else to go when everything is God, including the river, including the ocean, including the land that defines the distinction between the river and the land. Every border, every edge, <clears throat> every boundary of your experience, every idea in your mind is God. I want to remind you guys of the suggested practice that I gave during the weekend retreat, which is to remember over and 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 over again that all there is is God. And therefore it includes everything. Simple. To apply that to everything without exception, that only God is, only God exists. without exception. And you'll see it will submerge the mind, not in any sort of sleepy state, more like a merger, like a blending. It'll blend the mind with a non-conceptual naturalness. Non-conceptual inseparability, a lived direct perception or knowingness of unity. And in that direct perceptual knowingness of unity, that instinctual remembrance, there's not really any room for, even though it's all inclusive, it doesn't give rise to a, a separate mind bubble. doesn't mean there's no thoughts per se, but the ability to think and reason and seek through the mind in that moment kind of dissolves. You could say it has reached the ocean, even if it's just a glimpse of that, even if it's just a a miniature sense of that. But for that moment, when you're really in that, that clear acknowledgement that there is only God without exception, that means literally everything that's part of your palette right now, part of your canvas right now, equals God. If you let there be no exception in that acknowledgement, in that conviction, in that mantra, then th there's a... a Uh, you kind of, you, you kind of maybe maybe want to express something, but the, uh. so it's like river trying to define itself as a river, but it's kind of like it's now in the ocean, so it can't find itself back anymore. But it still exists; the essence is there, but the river's shape and history, when it's trying to come from that place. It, it's stopped in its tracks. It's muted. So it's a little bit like that. Your mind just is naturally muted, but again, not in a sleepy kind of way, muted, not submerged as in suppressed or absent in that way. There's vividness, there's aliveness, there's sentience, there's existence, there's knowingness, but there is no real ability or urge to separate from the naturalness of all this kind. Just that conviction, again, doesn't mean there is no variety present inside of that naturalness. You could still say there's variety, of course, but it's more of a service level variety. A playful, spontaneous multiplicity, an illusion, a dance, a play. But the essence of the belief of I'm a separate river on my way to the ocean has nowhere else to go when everything is God, including the river, including the ocean, including the land that defines the distinction between the river and the land. Every border, every edge, <clears throat> every boundary of your experience, every idea in your mind is God. Mission accomplished. And when your wish is fulfilled, there's no desire. There might be passion of a certain nature, there might be joy, but there's not the active desiring, there's not the active seeking in that way. But this should not be prematurely, conceptually try to be stopped. The seeking is, is a great impulse, it's your lifeline to God. But paradoxically, when you apply that seeking energy to the understanding that God is all there is and all there is is God, then that seeking energy very quickly, even if just for short moments, repeated many times, 
finds its source to be already here in whatever arises, as whatever appears, with no distinction, no separation. The gurgling noise of discrimination as you fill up your cup with water stops at the top when it overflows. When the discernment ends because the desire has been fulfilled or the seeking has been found, then <clears throat> there's no gurgling noise. So there's, there's a natural mutedness. And you can even think and talk quite a bit in that state, in a way, but it is different. It, do, it no longer eliminates, it no longer obscures the conviction that all is God. Because it's all included, no matter how much you talk or think. It depends on where you're coming from. And then the purification still continues. But at least the source has been found and the essence has been blended with. And then you can still put on some muscle and drink protein shakes. It's still allowed. <clears throat> There's nothing that stops that. You don't have to become skinny. You don't have to go wear a diaper and sit on a rock. You don't have to do any of that. You can, but you can also live your life as you do. You can progress. You can evolve. You can start a new company. You may not have the desire to do some of these things naturally because a lot of that is compensatory for not knowing source directly. So some of your desires will change. Some of your expressions will change, but this whole myth of it looks a certain way or certain behaviors are more spiritual than others is a big fat joke to those who know that all is God. And it's, um, it's a silly game. And I'm actually amazed how subtle that particular assumption is and how deep it runs in our collective, in our spiritual collectives, consciousnesses. It's quite funny. <laughs>